Around the globe, there are signposts of progress. The shadow of world war that existed at the founding of this institution has been lifted, and the prospect of war between major powers reduced. The ranks of member states has more than tripled, and more people live under governments they elected. Bashar Assad has been re-elected by a landslide, capturing 88.7 percent of the vote. Russian aggression in Europe recalls the days when large nations trampled small ones in pursuit of territorial ambition. Too often we have failed to enforce international norms when it's inconvenient to do so. The U.S. was the only member of the United Nations Security Council not to support a resolution condemning Israeli settlements on Friday. First, all of us, big nations and small, must meet our responsibility to observe and enforce international norms. <laughs> Some may disagree, but I believe America is exceptional. It would take another world war to roll back the forces of fascism, the notions of racial supremacy, and form this United Nations to ensure that no nation can subjugate its neighbors and claim their territory. Since Israel began its occupation of the Syrian Golan in 1967, it has carried out numerous actions violation a number of the basic norms of international law. Israeli authorities have started to confiscate thousand square meter of Arab Syrian lands in the occupied Golan Heights. There will always be times when it is necessary and just to use force. America's ability to project power all over the globe remains essential. Recently, Russia's actions in Ukraine challenge this post-war order. Here are the facts. After the people of Ukraine mobilized popular protests... Since Ukraine's independence in 1991, the United States has supported Ukrainians as they build democratic skills and institutions, as they promote civic participation and good governance, all of which are preconditions for Ukraine to achieve its European aspiration. Well, we did have an election. We did have a legitimate election before, and uh, the elected uh, president was uh, removed after we had... Uh, major street violence in reaction to his decision of going with an uh, economic agreement with Russia rather than the EU. Against the will of the government in Kiev, Crimea was annexed. This is a vision of the world in which might makes right. A world in which one's nation's borders can be redrawn by another. And civilized people are not allowed to recover the remains of their loved ones because of the truth that might be revealed. America stands for something different. We believe that right makes might. That bigger nations should not be able to bully smaller ones. And that people should be able to choose their own future. And these are simple truths, but they must be defended. America and our allies will support the people of Ukraine as they develop their democracy and economy. We will reinforce our NATO allies and uphold our commitment to collective self-defense. We will impose a cost on Russia for aggression, and we will counter falsehoods with the truth. The intel that you say backs the claims that were made on social media, and in particular, it seems to me that the Secretary was very definitive, as you were just now, in saying that you know for sure mm -hmm. that the rocket, that the missile was fired from the rebel-held territory. Mm -hmm. And We have endeavored to make public as much information as possible. Obviously, if you're dealing with an intelligence assessment in part, uh, so we are sometimes limited in what information we can share. That's why I think you saw the Secretary speak much <laughs> more forward-leaning about how, why we believe this right. and how we believe it. Sometimes you can't get into all the specifics. Moreover, a different path is available. The path of diplomacy and peace and the ideals this institution is designed to uphold. The only way that will change is if every nation represented here directly and urgently makes it clear that Russia and China will pay a price. A particular state used the veto power 50 times to protect Israel, and it continues to threat 
the use of veto of the veto power. This could be considered as partaking in a genocide, as this conduct is tantamount to turning a blind eye and supporting the Israeli massacres in occupied Arab lands. Let alone the misuse of the developments in Syria to divert international public opinion away from the legitimate Palestinian demands to have a fully fledged membership within the United Nations. America is pursuing a diplomatic resolution to the Iranian nuclear issue as part of our commitment to stop the spread of nuclear weapons and pursue the peace and security of a world without them. Because whatever stage of development they might be in their nuclear weapons program in the next 10 years, during which they might foolishly consider launching an attack on Israel, we would be able to totally obliterate them. That's a terrible thing to say, but those people who run Iran need to understand that. But we will insist that all nations abide by the rules of the road and resolve their territorial disputes peacefully consistent with international law. <laughs> and if the world acts together, we can make sure that all of our children enjoy lives of opportunity and dignity. America is pursuing ambitious reductions in our carbon emissions. and We've increased our investments in clean energy. We will do our part and help developing nations do theirs. We're the largest, the mil our military is the largest energy consumer in the world. <laughs> this group has terrorized all who they come across in Iraq and Syria. Mothers, sisters, daughters have been subjected to rape as a weapon of war. 142 allegations of assault against women had been made in the last decade. Innocent children have been gunned down. Bodies have been dumped in mass graves. This mass burial site was uh, first discovered on Tuesday by the self-defense forces as uh, they were looking for mines in this particular area. They've exhumed four bodies, including uh, those of three. In the most horrific crimes imaginable, innocent human beings have been beheaded with videos of the atrocity distributed to shock the conscience of the world. No God condones this terror. The only language understood by killers like this is the language of force. So the United States of America will work with a broad coalition to dismantle this network of death. In this effort, we do not act alone. We will work to cut off their financing and to stop the flow of fighters into and out of the region. And already over 40 nations have offered to join this coalition. Since January, Saudi Arabia has beheaded 34 people. At least 79 people were put to death in the Islamic country last year. But that means cutting off the funding that fuels this hate. Wall Street Journal reported this past week that the Obama administration was also in talks with the Saudis about naval and missile system upgrades that could be worth tens of billions of dollars more. And these steps must be followed by a broader truce. Nowhere is this more necessary than Syria. Together with our partners, America is training and equipping the Syrian opposition to be a counterweight to the terrorists of ISIL and the brutality of the Assad regime. But the only lasting solution to Syria's civil war is political, an inclusive political transition that responds to the legitimate aspirations of all Syrian citizens. Last month, I ordered our military to take targeted action against ISIL to stop its advances. We're trying to, we've just gotten clearance from the Senate, our last hold last week, to be able to provide stipends, very modest stipends, $150 a month, enough to keep somebody on the job. Rather have a trained policeman who's trusted by the community than have to bring in a new crowd. Uh, and, and or bring in, bring in uh, an international group that doesn't know the place. So it's obviously... So America will partner with those that promote that vision, where women are full participants in a country's politics or economy. Societies are more likely to succeed. Of uh, women uh, driving here in, in Saudi Arabia, it's no secret that in the United States of America, we 
embrace equality for everybody, uh, regardless of uh, gender, race, uh, or any other qualification. But it's up to Saudi Arabia to make its own decisions about its own... Uh... But America will be a respectful and constructive partner. <laughs> we will neither tolerate terrorist safe havens nor act as an occupying power. <laughs> we will take action against threats to our security and our allies while building an architecture of counterterrorism cooperation. Recently in Syria, and as a result of that trip, there were several reports that uh, claimed that you had a photograph taken with a notorious kidnapper named Mohammed Noor. Your spokesman says if that was the case, it was regrettable, but Senator Rand Paul picked up on that and essentially said, if you don't know who you're having your photo taken with, how do you know who you're giving weapons to? Hey, they're brave people. They're fighting for freedom. I know who they are. I know General Idris and his uh, leadership. Uh, it is air power that is, dis that is given Bashar Assad this tremendous advantage. Look, 100,000 people have been killed. 8,000 of them are children. The, it, the, the massacre goes on, and, uh, and it cries out for American leadership. We need American leadership, and that's what I get in every country and every, every one of these people that I talk to. And yes, I know the difference between al-Nusra and, uh, and the legitimate people who we should be supporting, and the best way to do that is give them a safe area to operate. The violence engulfing the region today has made too many Israelis ready to abandon the hard work of peace. And that's something worthy of reflection within Israel. Because let's be clear, the status quo in the West Bank and Gaza is not sustainable. Graham says the Senate vote is a signal to Tel Aviv that the U.S. is there when Israel needs it. Earlier, the Pentagon announced that it was making more ammunition deliveries to Israel. The United States will never shy away from defending our interests. But we will also not shy away from the promise of this institution and its universal declaration of human rights. The notion that peace is not merely the absence of war, but the presence of a better life. So yes, we have our own racial and ethnic tensions. And like every country, we continually wrestle with how to reconcile the vast changes wrought by globalization and greater diversity with the traditions that we hold dear. But we welcome the scrutiny of the world. He came there with the intent to take as much material down as he possibly could. America is not the same as it was 100 years ago or 50 years ago or even a decade ago because we fight for our ideas and we are willing to criticize ourselves when we fall short. <laughs> because we hold our leaders accountable. I know that's an old joke. My instinct is for us to focus on how do we make sure that moving forward uh, we are doing the right thing. Uh, that doesn't mean that uh, if somebody has blatantly broken the law, that they are above the law. <laughs> Give you a head. But my orientation is going to be to move forward. So, so let me just press that one more time. You're not ruling out prosecution, but will you tell your Justice Department to investigate these cases and follow the evidence wherever it leads? What I, uh, I think my general view when it comes to my attorney general is he's the people's lawyer. Uh, Eric Holder's been nominated. His job is to uphold the Constitution and look after the interests of the American people, not to be swayed by my day-to-day -day politics. Thursday, the Republican-controlled U.S. House of Representatives reprimanded Attorney General Eric Holder for failing to release internal Justice Department documents related to a botched government investigation into gun running. Known as Fast and Furious. And insist on a free press. While well, two reporters covering the unrest in the city were arrested and physically assaulted by police last In a separate incident, a group of reporters from Al Jazeera America were tear gassed as they attempted to film an ongoing protest. After the journalists were driven away by the gas, police then moved over to Al Jazeera America's equipment and began tearing it down, pointing those cameras toward the ground. Reporter for the Associated Press 
did while he was working for the LA Times. Now, the Intercept has published emails exchanged between Delanian and a press person at the CIA, which were released as part of a FOIA lawsuit looking into the agency's interactions with reporters. And aside from Delanian's close relationship with the Intel press shop, the documents also show that the agency regularly invites reporters to their headquarters. Because we address our differences in the open space of democracy with respect for the rule of law. If we determine beyond a reasonable doubt, and I'm beginning to wonder how much more evidence they need here, uh, that it was Russia that was directly responsible for this. At least they put everything in place. Maybe there well, wasn't a Russian there to say pull the trick. Is there, were there neo-Nazis in those uh, efforts, street violence that uh, uh, led to Mr. Y uh, Yanukovych's removal? Uh, first of all, the vast majority of those who participated on the Maidan were peaceful protesters. Uh, if you had a chance to see the pictures, some of them. The question is, were there neo-Nazi groups involved in that? Um, there were, as I said, almost every color of Ukraine was represented, including some, the answer, including so the some ugly yeah, the colors. The answer is yes. People of the world now look to us here to be as decent and as dignified and as courageous as they are trying to be in their daily lives. And at this crossroads, I can promise you that the United States of America will not be distracted or deterred from what must be done. We are heirs to a proud legacy of freedom. 